Welcome back to the new WAFL. We put it to a vote, and 57% of you think the Worldwide American Football League, aka the Waffle, should be our new name, so we're rolling with it. Thank you to everyone who voted, but now it is time to dive into the Waffle's week three slate of games. Here we go as the Black Knights versus the Melbourne Bulls. Bulls ball in the first. Gardner Minshew is still in for injured Tua. He's leading the team downfield at the five, fourth and two. They're going for it. No field goals needed. They're going to pound it up the middle with DeAndre Swift. Seven, nothing lead. Bulls again in the second. Running over the Knights into the goal line again. On third and goal, the screen pass not going to work. So this time they will settle for the field goal. Up 10-0. The Black Knights trying to get something going before the half. The tiny dump off from Dak Prescott to the back is going to be just enough for a little field goal try. They get on the board. It's 10-3. Now in the fourth quarter, Dak Prescott's throwing. And Travis Kelsey's catching that one. They're going to lead to the two-yard diving scamper by Joe Mixon. Then the Bulls with less than a minute to go. They're getting downfield. The 34-yarder is good. So the Black Knights have one last chance with time ticking off. Three, two, one. Dax going to the end zone. It's batted around and falls to the ground. Bulls hang on. Minshew gets the win in relief. The Bulls moving to two and one. The Black Knights down to one and two. Next, we have the two and oh Bison going to the one and one Omaha Antlers. In the second, Josh Allen's going to get hit as he throws, completes the pass, but he's going to be shaken up. He's out of here. In comes the backup, Kellen Mond, and he's got a wide open receiver. That's Daniel Bellinger. Now it's Bison Ball down seven on third and six, and Daniel Jones is going to rifle this one to Darren Waller. He gets the first nearing the red zone. Now at the two-yard line, up the gut to a pulsating Dalvin Cook. The easy touchdown ties it up. Bison get the ball back. And Jones throwing it over the shoulder. The catch leads to the field goal, and Bison take the lead 10-7. Now Mond on the read option has wide open spaces. He gets the first down and more, leads him down to the four-yard line, and then calls his own number. A little QB keeper takes the lead 14-10. Now back to Jones, he's been slinging it deep. And his receiver's gonna come up with a tough grab in the end zone, Paris Campbell scores a touchdown. So Antlers are down. And the little pirouette and throw is good, so the Antlers are gonna tie this one at 17. Just 12 seconds left, the Bison trying to get a score before the end of regulation. This field goal from the 40. That's a miss. So now Josh Allen, he's back for the Hail Mary. And this one has the distance and it's bouncing around and drops down. So we're looking at overtime. Bison try first. Ooh, nearly intercepted. Jones got lucky on that one. Antlers get a chance now. And Allen's back in and he slices the defense in half with that throw from the 28. The field goal is good, so overtime victory. Allen returns and completes the comeback. That'll put both teams at 2-1. and one. But next up, it's the Blues. It's the Oilers. The Oilers are having a rough go, but they're 0-2. The Blues are undefeated. Opening kickoff. He's going to get shoulder charged, and the ball was dropped. So Blues with the easy field position to start. Russell Wilson connects to Stephon Diggs. Touchdown Blues, 7-3 later in the first. And Aaron Jones jukes a man out of his shoes. He gets down inside the red zone. And the play action pass is working. Russell, he finds Diggs for his second touchdown of the game. Now it's Oilers ball. Down 14. Can he pick it? What can he do? Feed Justin Jefferson. That's always a good plan. They get the first down. It eventually leads to a field goal. So 17-6. Into the third, the Blues, we're going to kick it too. Wait, it's a fake. 
We're going to throw it, and Mercedes Lewis is going to catch it and moves the chains. And then on first and goal from the two, Aaron Jones, he's going to wiggle and dive his way to the end zone. Touchdown, 24-6. to The Oilers, they're trying to mount a comeback and appear to score the touchdown to Zay Flowers. But the refs are going to have another look at this thing. And they say, no, we're taking the touchdown away. And that's where it'll stay. The Blues 24, the Oilers 6, and the Blues stay undefeated. They're 3-0. and Now we head to Toronto. It's the 1-1 one one Thunderbirds hosting the 2-0 and Wizards. Thunderbird ball in the red zone. Tannehill feeling the pressure. He throws it away. They'll settle for the early field goal. 3-0 lead. Wizard ball. Purdy back to throw. And he's sacked by a flock of Thunderbirds. They got to punt this away. Thunderbird ball. And Tannehill hits the corner route. That'll set up the field goal. So field goal, field goal at 6 nothing. Thunderbirds. Here are the Wizards. Purdy launching one deep downfield to Tyreek Hill. Tyreek getting smothered. He hangs on. They'll kick their own field goal. So field goal game early. 6-3. to three, Thunderbird ball. Pass is going to Mike Evans underneath. And he's breaking all sorts of tackles. And escapes down the field. This guy is a beast. He can't be tackled. Mike Evans runs away with it. Next possession, Tannehill. Intercepted. He's having a tough go over this year. Seventh interception. Now the Wizards are going to get the ball on the 12th. And the first pass from Purdy is a touchdown. Christian Watson hauls it in. So it's a three-point game with under two minutes to go. The Wizards need a stop if they want to stay in it. But the running lanes are open. Absolutely gashed by the Thunderbirds. They're going to chip in the little extra field goal to make it 16-10. And the Thunderbirds hand the Wizards their first loss of the season. Now let's head up to Alaska. It's the 0-2 Huskies hosting the 1-1 Golden Eagles. It's second and eight, and Garoppolo's back to pass. Has the passing game working early, the completion there, and then third and goal. He's throwing to his tight end, Robert Tunyon, for the touchdown. Third and three, up seven, still. Play action is complete, and the receiver's gonna slip out of a few tackles and go all the way to the end zone. Second passing touchdown, that's Mike Williams making the moves and now Huskies down two scores Justin Herbert he hits his back out of the backfield that's Alvin Kamara now it's first and goal from the six Herbert hits his tight end Hayden Hurst for the score so on the board 14 to 7 Golden Eagle ball now and Jimmy G is getting picked off Stephon Gilmore jumps the route and he is off to the races no one's gonna touch him for the touchdown so now we have a 14-14 game end of the first half Herbert he's throwing and he's intercepted and the Golden Eagles are going to run this back so trading pick sixes leads to the 21-14 score but in the third quarter the Huskies are driving Herbert's back to pass he finds his receiver Elijah Moore for the touchdown we're tied back up at 21 the Golden Eagles end of the third that's Jimmy G to Mike Williams. And then third and goal from the one. Garoppolo finds Alan Lazard. So Golden Eagles up seven, 28-21. Garoppolo's throwing again, and this time he finds a wide open Robert Tunyon for another touchdown. Now it's Huskies ball in the fourth. They're running out of time. Herbert pressing and getting intercepted by Jair Alexander. That's going to seal it. They each score one more time, but the game is out of reach to Huskies fall to 0 and 3 the golden eagles 2 and 1 next we have our 0 and 2 bowl it's the armadillos and the dreadnoughts things have not gone well in texas for these teams and the dreadnoughts are driving early cd lamb escapes for the end zone dreadnoughts take the lead 7 to 3 now 7 6 dreadnoughts in the red zone that's Ezekiel Elliott. He pounds it inside for the score. 14-6. Armadillo's now in the goal line. They're handing it off to Brees Hall, and he scores. But they need the two points to tie. So Goff has a wide open receiver. Easy two points. So tied at 14. Dreadnought's ball back. And Geno Smith's going to a striding Kyle Pitts. Easily gets down to the 27. That's going to set up the field goal at the end of the third. So 17-14. Armadillos at midfield. Goff going up and over the defense. The pass is complete. 
That's going to set up first and goal. And Damian Harris is going to get the goal line carry. 21-17 Armadillo's lead. Now it's dreading out ball. Third and one. A blitzing Armadillo causes the ball to pop out. And the others jump on it. They take over. They're going to try and run out the clock. Two minutes to go. They're also going to run all the way to the end zone. Brees Hall scores a second touchdown. And on their next possession, Brees Hall is going to get his third. He goes untouched as the Armadillos try to run out this game. That'll make the final score 35 to 17. The Armadillos get their first win of the season. The Dreadnoughts now 0 and 3. Next up, let's go to Orlando. The 1 0 and 1 Orbits versus just the regular 1 and 1 Pioneers. And Orbits throwing early. Pass gets him down inside the red zone. But third and 17, Hertz is feeling the pressure. He's thrown around. That'll force the fourth and 29 field goal, which is good. So 3 0. Orbits get the ball back. But Hertz's pass is picked off. So Pioneer defense steps up. They're going to have good field position. It's now second and goal from the five. And they're going to hand it off to their back. Javante Williams with the touchdown run. Now on third and nine, Ritter's looking to pass. But he is gobbled up in the backfield. They're going to go to their kicking game. Field goal is good. So 10-3, Pioneers lead. Hertz is back to pass. And he's got a wide open receiver down the middle. They're inside the red line. Now at the goal line. It's a QB draw and Hertz runs it in himself. The Orbits tie this game up. They're going to get the ball back and they're going to find a receiver wide open down the field again. So the Pioneer secondary not holding up. Then on third and goal, Hertz has a wide open Odell Beckham for the touchdown. They take the lead but the Pioneers are driving on third and eight. Ritter's throw incomplete. So they'll settle for the field goal. 17 13 orbits. They're going to hand it off to Miles Sanders. He's going up the middle. He's going up and out. Huge gain. Tackled at the one. So Hurts back to Beckham. Scores another touchdown. 27 16 is our final score. The orbits run away with this thing. They go to 2-0-1. Oh, now we go from the Orbits to the team that tied with them, the San Diego Sentinels, 1-0-1. Oh, Derek Carr throwing to A.J. Brown, gets both feet down. That's a touchdown, 7-0 Sentinels. Then Mack the Lumberjack gets this pass out. It's a first down in the red zone. But red zone woes. They can't complete on a third and 17. They'll go ahead and kick the field goal. Making the score 7-3. to three. Sentinels driving in the red zone car. He finds his tight end. That's Irv Smith Jr. He's back from the injury sustained a couple weeks ago. Now what's Mac Lumberjack going to do on 4th and 10? He can't convert. Carr, he converts. Pass is good. The field goal is good. The Sentinels absolutely boat race. The Lumberjacks 20-3. They will go to 2 0 oh, 1. The Lumberjacks fall to 1 and 2. Now the 1 and 1 Steamers go to the 2 0 oh, Brooklyn Snowhawks and Snowhawks ball early. They're going to dump it off to the back. The screen, though, doesn't go anywhere. They're kicking the field goal early. 3 0 lead. Snowhawks again. Time dwindling in the first half. Trevor Lawrence zips one all the way downfield. First and goal. Under 10 seconds to go, he finds his receiver, Jackson Smith and Jigba. The Snowhawks out to a commanding 13-0 lead in the first half. Ensuing kickoff, it's fielded by Marquez Stevenson. And he goes untouched through the line. He's got the speed to return this one to the house. And now Virginia Beach will take some momentum into the half. But in the third, the Steamers facing a fourth and six. Pass is caught, they convert and enter the red zone. Now first and goal, Burrow's throw is caught and fighting his way for a touchdown is Nico Collins. Score 16-14, Steamers get the ball back in the fourth overthrow. They're gonna settle for the field goal, but the field goal will give them the lead. The Snowhawks, they still have a chance. Less than a minute to go, they're down four. Trevor Lawrence, is sacked, no timeouts. They have to hurry to the line, fourth and 21. They need a miracle, but they can't find one. The Steamers complete the comeback, down 13 zip. They win 20 to 16. 
Now it's the 0-2 Dragons hosting the 1-1 one one Caps. And Caps ball, Mahomes struggling early. He's intercepted. That's going to give the Dragons amazing field position. Denzel Ward with the pick. And very next play, Kyler Murray finds a wide open receiver. Easy touchdown, Rondell Moore, number four. So Dragons surprising 7-0 lead. Mahomes launches one over the defense. Chris Godwin hauls it in. We're tied up. Caps again in the red zone. Patrick Mahomes buying some time for Godwin. And then first and goal, the throw and catch by Taysom Hill. That'll make the score 14 to seven Caps. And then Caps driving again. Mahomes hits the sideline target for a first down, now first and goal, play action, no pressure, just all Godwin on that one. 21, now 24 to seven. Dragons trying to claw their way back, fourth and one, the field goal is good. So the lead is down to two touchdowns. Kyler scrambling and getting stopped one yard of the first down. So fourth and one, he's gonna go to his legs again. It's close, but he gets the first down barely. Now first and 10 from the 13. He rifles one in there. Touchdown, Rondell Moore, his second. So we have a one score game with one minute in the fourth. The Dragons defense comes up clutch, forces the punt. So 29 seconds to go. Fourth and 16, Dragons can't haul in the pass. It was short of the sticks anyway. 24-17 final score, the Caps win. Now we go to Tokyo. The 0-2 Tigers are hosting the 1-1 Nighthawks. Kirk Cousins dealing in the first quarter. Great pass, gets him inside the 10. And then second and goal, the throw left is caught. Touchdown, Tyler Higby. 7-3 now is the score. Nighthawks, Bryce Young, wide open receiver, gets the first, and then first from the one, they punch it in. Dearness Johnson gets the touchdown. Nighthawks take the lead. Now the handoff to the back. Nice juke move. That's a first down for Damian Pierce. He'll get them in range for the game time field goal. So we're 10-10 still in the fourth. The toss out to the back for the Nighthawks. Gets them inside the red zone. That's A-Chan. Nighthawks still running down the Tigers' throat. This time it's McCaffrey going propeller mode and in. Touchdown. 17-10 Tigers. Two minutes to go. Kirk Cousins finds a man downfield. So they're driving. Third and 16. 30 seconds to go. Clean pocket. He's going to dump it down to the back. Pierce is going to get tackled at the 22. So now fourth and five from the 22. 15 seconds. Cousins throw. Knocked down. Tigers fall to 0 and 3. The Nighthawks, they're now 2 and 1. Now it's the Shamrocks versus the Monarchs, the battle of the 1 and 1 teams. We're tied at 3 Shamrock ball, and Devin Singletary is going to get shoulder charged, and the ball pops out. So Monarchs get the ball on 3rd and 3. Lamar Jackson is looking to make something happen, but the Shamrock defense is all over him. They're going to hold him to a field goal. Score is 6 to 3. Shamrock ball, they're handing it off to Singletary. They gave him another shot, and it's a good thing they did because he is shot out of a cannon. He's going all the way, oh, nearly caught at the goal line after the huge run. He had a huge run last week. Then the throw to Dells got her. Toe tap, touchdown, 10 to 6. Shamrocks, they get the ball back. CJ Stroud is slinging it all around the field. This one's a touchdown to DJ Moore. 20 to 9, Shamrock lead. Expanding. Another big play by DJ Moore. The yards are stacking up. That'll make the score 27 to 9. The Monarchs, they're driving, but Jackson's throw undercut. That's intercepted. They're going to kneel it in the end zone. Shamrocks in full control. CJ Stroud's pass is going to get intercepted. The Monarchs, do they have new life? Jimmy Ward with the clutch pick. Now Jackson, he's making it happen with his legs. He converts on a fourth and five. Now Lamar on fourth down. They just need a couple of inches, but the Shamrock defense is dominating. Final score, 27 to nine. Shamrocks will go to two and one. The Monarchs fall to one and two. Next up, it's the Mounties versus the Condors. Both teams are undefeated at two and oh. Mounties facing a third and nine. Rogers throw. 
incomplete. So they're gonna attempt a field goal from nearly the logo, but they get it. So three, nothing lead. Now Condor ball, Fields, buying time in the pocket. He has a wide open Mark Andrews. How did he get so open? He's tackled at the four. So now Condor's ball near the goal line and Fields is gonna throw on the run into coverage. It looks like he has it, but it's the defender that has it. Micah Hyde with the great interception. Mounties take over, third and seven from the 29. Rogers is just gonna throw this one away and they're gonna tack on three more. So six, nothing is the lead. Go to the fourth, Condor ball in the red zone. They're driving, pass complete to the tight end. Mark Andrews, big day, third and 10. Mounties down one. Rodgers feeling the pressure, he's sacked, and he's gonna leave this game injured. In steps the backup, Malik Willis. What can Willis do? He can do that, he can find a wide open receiver and let him do the rest. Terry McLaurin gets the first down, and then he hands off to the back. Kareem Hunt explodes through the line. Twice in a row, gets him down to the one yard line, then Willis. Fire this one into double coverage. Somehow the receiver gets it. That's Devin Duvernay with the clutch catch. They're gonna need the two points to go up a full touchdown, but they're stuffed. Oh, Condor's ball, first and 10 with 30 seconds to go. A touchdown will win it. First down grab by Mark Andrews. That gets him all the way to the 42, 17 to go. Fields is gonna go on the run, but he's taken down. They have no timeouts. So we gotta hurry this one up. Three seconds left. Clock hits triple zeros. Fields needs a miracle. Does he have one? Andrews is always open, but he's caught. And game saving tackle by Micah Hyde. Who else? The Mounties survived 12 to 7. They stay undefeated. Now, here we go. It's Sunday night football. The Aviators looking to get their first win against the Redwoods. And they just might get it. Baker throwing it right to the corner. Aviators get the ball. They're on the goal line now. Jordan Love's pass caught. Jamar Chase, touchdown. 10-0 lead. Redwoods cross midfield. They have the leg, so they're going to cut the lead to seven. 10 to three in the second half. Play action. Baker's got a wide open Devontae Adams. They're in the red zone. Baker baking and it's coming out of the oven well. They're in the goal line. Derrick Henry, he's as big as a Redwood. He scores a touchdown. They tie this game at 10. In the third, Love finds his man, Jamar Chase. Sure-handed Chase gets the first down, but third and five. Love is spinning and just a little out of range, so they're gonna launch a field goal from the logo and get it, so a lot of big kicks this week. Aviators with the lead. Baker dumping down to the back, but Henry can't escape. Kind of an awkward throw there. They'll kick the field goal. We're tied at 13. In the fourth, less than two minutes to go. Baker rifling it left. That's caught at the 28-yard line. Derrick Henry's going to do the rest. He leaps over his own blocker who fell over. Their first and goal. Henry, one more carry. Should do it into the end zone. They have the seven-point lead. Aviators. Can they come back? Love completes his first pass. Love again. Oh, he's the blitz gets him. Love throwing sideline. The receiver shakes off his man, so we have five seconds left. We need a Hail Mary. Was he paying attention when Rodgers threw all those Hail Marys? We will see. Chase catches it. Can he do anything with it? No, the defense swarms them, so good prevent defense saves the Redwoods. They went 20 to 13. Now we have our Monday night double headers. The first one, the Voyagers versus the Desperados. Voyager ball, Sam Darnold taking the read option for the first down. Then Darnold's throwing at third and seven. Desperado defense steps up with the sack. So they're kicking field goals early. They get the three point lead. Voyager ball again, second and three. And we're going end zone. Cooper Cup gets the feet down and thrown into the camera, but he, he's all right. 10-0 lead Voyagers. Trey Lance now doesn't see anyone open, so he's going to muscle his way into the end zone. People on his back, they can't even take him down. 13-7, Lance throwing. Wide open man across the middle. DJ Chark scores the touchdown. Desperado's lead now with just 49 seconds to go. Darnold's pass down the middle. Cup 
moving the chains. They're getting into field goal range. The Voyagers knock it through the uprights. They're going to win it 16-14. to They'll go to 2-1. and The Desperados fall to 0-3 on the season. Now it's Monday Night Football Part 2. It's the undefeated Elks versus the 1-1 one one River Hogs. The Elks getting the running game going early. That's going to set them up for the field goal. They take that 3-0 lead. River Hogs. Deshaun Watson's going to use his legs, and he's going to get a huge gain out of this one right up the middle of the defense. 25-yard run, now third and 10, and the Elks are bringing the corner blitz. Nick Needham running like a deer, gets the sack. That's going to hold the Hogs to a field goal. We're tied up at three. River Hogs ball back in the third. Watson's pass is intercepted. Fred Warner, another interception. He had one last week. Now it's Elks ball. Anthony Richardson's driving. But Aaron Donald comes hard charging out of there like a wild hog. He throws him out. Elks field goal is good though. Six threes the lead. Now it's second and six on the 24. Watson sacked. That will bring out the field goal unit. And the River Hogs kick is good. So we're tied at six apiece. It's been nothing but field goals, but here's a handoff. Bijan Robinson gets the first down. We're near the red zone. Now third and 15. Richardson's pass. It's a little screen play. Doesn't get anywhere. So you guessed it. Another field goal. Nine to six. The Elks with the lead. Elks ball again. But the Hogs defense catches them in the end zone. That's a safety. Nine eight. Weird score. Watson using his legs in the play action. Good little QB keep around the end. Now the Hogs have it past midfield, first and 10. Isaiah Pacheco, he's got the first down. Third and nine. Watson rolling right and absolutely jacked up. Matthew Judon with the sack. That's gonna hold him to a field goal. So 11-9 is the score. It's not every day you see an 11-9 score, but the Elks are gonna take this kick. Jamison Crowder finds a hole in the defense, and he is off to the races. The River Hogs catch him. No, they don't. He falls forward into the end zone. Touchdown, Elks. 16 to 11 now. Two minutes to go. Two-minute drill for the Hogs, and Watson using his legs again. So big running day for the QB. Fourth and two. River Hogs need to convert. And it appeared to be caught, but it's punched out by the defense at the last second. The Elks hang on. They win 16 to 11. The Elks will keep their undefeated season alive. River Hogs, they'll fall to one and two. So where does that leave us with our undefeated watch? Well, in the AFC, we have the Blues at a perfect 3-0. And the Orbit Sentinels technically not defeated at 2-0-1. So you count three on the AFC side. And looking at the NFC side of things, the Mounties and the Elks at a perfect 3-0. That'll make for five undefeated teams left. But what about the flip side? We have our winless watch we need to check out next. We are down to just seven winless teams. The Dragons, Dreadnoughts, Desperado. Tigers, Aviators, Huskies, and Oilers will continue to monitor those situations as we head into week number four.